Hello everyone, we're, uh, we're just going to give it another couple of minutes before we get going, but uh, welcome to those of you who have joined us already. Well, I think I think we'll we'll get going. Welcome everybody to the folk film gathering. This is one of a series of musical conversations that have been taking place uh, to complement the films and and the uh, directors' conversations. And I'm delighted to welcome this evening uh, from Edinburgh, Mary Campbell, and from uh, in Kentucky, I think, uh, Will Oldham. Uh, Mary is uh, a musician, a uh, composer, improviser, increasingly these days uh, a stage performer, a theatrical performer, Will is an actor, uh, singer, songwriter and musician. And uh, we'll get, get going with them just in a moment, but uh, for now if I could just remind you that uh, the Folk Film Gathering is on for one more day. Uh, you have until 6 o'clock tomorrow evening to sign up if you would like to see the films. Uh, if Once you do sign up, you will have a wee bit longer to, to watch them, but that deadline is fast approaching. And also, as the conversation unfolds, if you would like to pitch in any questions for either Mary or Will, that would be, that would be great and, and most acceptable. Uh, so, Mary and Will, welcome to you, and uh, I'm just going to start off by, by asking both of you at this time what, you, what you're working on, what you've got in the stocks at the minute, and uh, we'll see where that takes us. So, uh, maybe Mary, start with you. Right, well, hello, and um, it's great to be here and having a bit of a chat and sharing thoughts about our music and work. Uh, I am working on this other this show at the moment so i feel quite lucky that at the moment with lockdown i've got a bit of space to work on a show which i want to make for the fringe in august 22 and i'm looking for songs and ways of threading together stories and characters and um, it's quite a long and complex process altogether so i can't do it really on my own but it's a, a really great team so i'm really kind of cooking on that right now um, and uh, yeah, that's taking my head. That's taking my head. So a bit scary too. Don't know if I can do it. So that's what I'm going. <laughs> well, what about you? Um, yeah, I, 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 I'm, I'm constantly trying to figure out what it is that I'm doing uh, with, with music because um, I've approach it from strange little angles but 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 we did put it we'd, we were able to we had, we had made a record i made a record with a, a friend of mine named matt sweeney and and we finished it just before we finished recording it just before lockdown really hit here in the united states um and uh mixed it kind of during um and then mm. released it uh sometime in recent months and we just played played some shows and those went very well, so we'll continue to try to, to jump out and do a show here and there. And then meanwhile at home, I, I, yeah, I got so comfortable working at home in a way that I haven't in recent years just because there was so little distraction in the past year and a half. I'm trying to continue on from that momentum and go into my little private nooks and continue to work on songs as they make themselves available. Okay. We're moving house. We'll move house. We're going to get rid of this house, which is kind of cool. Oh, wow. Wow, that's big. Um, that's a big good uh, shift. Have you it got, is, like, yeah. quite soon? Are you? Has this been in the cards for a long time? Or are you suddenly, is it, is it imminent moving? It's, it's 
Okay. And some some people came by today to look at look at look at it. Wow. Uh, so sometime in the next month or two, something like that. Do you have a family? Do you have kids? I, I have a little yeah, a little girl. We have a little girl who's two and a half. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Yourself? We've got um, we've got two kids. I am married to Dave. And we have two kids aged 22 and 25, two girls. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I kind of, I think, you know, Nula Kennedy, I know you've worked with her. And back in the, certainly in the early 90s, I was sort of getting into folk, real folk music. I don't know. I was in Edinburgh. I was messing about with stuff. And Dave and I were, had a duo called The Cast at that time. And we were doing songs and making a few albums then. But then we had kids and then things changed, you know, they changed with, and I said to Dave, get a job, man, just get, just get a job. <laughs> so that's us. But we are, remember the two and a half year old stage. Pretty good. And it was full of stuff. We were about to move it to, when Ada was two and a half, we moved. Good. Oh, well, that's nice. So you're going somewhere very different. We're, 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 no, we're just going two blocks away. Oh, right. We don't want to go too, too far. We're from, we're from here, Louisville, Kentucky, and, and we have so okay. much, so much nice. connection to this place. I, I can't imagine. We, we, we used to fantasize about being other places, and then I think lockdown really helped us realize that we have it so great. Here. Even even as Kentucky is a relatively depressed and depressing state in many ways, if you look at statistics and if you look at um, air quality mm -hmm. and things like that, it's still it's it's unfortunately home. Uh, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Really that really. and it, does, does that does that connection with with Kentucky, with where you're from, does that come up in your songs? Is it a is it a, a factor in your creative life? does for sure even if it's just a matter of knowing that my whole you know my everyday i i have so many friends who live all over the place in big cities um and i and i know that their daily experience can only be so deep um you know because because they've had to discard a certain amount of active connections to to place when you mm. when you move you mm. don't you don't look at a you know, you don't look at a building and, and see your life's experience with that building or, or you're not going to run into people. You're starting from a new place and, and, and you've sort of put on hold a lot of your connections. You're, you're, you know, it's all become memory instead of active, active. But it, and then at the same time, the, the last record that came out just before lockdown was a record called I, I Made a Place. And it was kind of coming to terms with being here and just I can record here. I can write here. I can play with an amazing community of musicians here in this place mm -hmm. and I just learn more about it all the time mm -hmm. so yeah I, mm -hmm. I mean I don't necessarily say on the corner of this street and this street or mm -hmm. but it's all based on having a history yeah. and power of place, the power and, the of place. And, the, and the people in that place too yeah I found myself really drawn to being on Liz Moore when I was um, uh, in lockdown partly as well because I built a studio there. We have this little cottage mum and dad got in 1970. Tiny little, and the, the community was 70 at that time. It's very small, tiny island, one mile across by nine mile long, sort of long. And anyway, we just used to go for holidays, but when lockdown happened, I, oh yeah, I made the studio to work on stuff and I just had this feeling that there was things that were needing to happen. I wanted to make stuff happen there. like fiddle courses, you know, and yeah. run stuff and make a living actually to have work figuring out how to do freelance living with kids um, with teaching fiddle and stuff like that. But anyway, so we made the studio. And what, what constitutes the studio? What is the what studio? Is it? It's like a small hall. It's not a recording studio. It's a small hall. Um, I mean, it's nine meters by six and a half meters, a kind of Swedish build. So it keeps the heat in and it's kind of like a cottage with no rafters, with the no rafters, it sort of goes down and across. Anyway, it's, it, it's great. It's a beautiful space. Um, and then I started doing courses there and thought this, actually, do you know, we managed to make it because 
in the garden. We put it in the garden. Um, and we're just lucky that we could make it. We hadn't have a situation which made it possible. But anyway, this last year I was like, man, I have got to get to that studio and be there. And because, yeah, because also I was trying to make, I am trying to make this show about that place. So I thought I can't be just in memory. It's got to be real. I've got to embody this feeling here. This is what's, you know, this is the work. Yeah. And so it's been a great opportunity. If it hadn't had lockdown, I wouldn't have been able to do that. <laughs> Did you build the structure or was it an existing structure? We built the structure, yeah. built it, yeah. And are your folks still around? The dad's around. Uh, he lives in Vancouver. He yeah. lives, yeah, he lives in Vancouver with Lois. And my sister lives in Vancouver on Bowen Island, actually, just off Vancouver. She's been there for, oh, she's been there about 30, 40 years, three kids. And uh, my mum died in 19, uh, in 2000, and, oh my gosh, I can't even remember when I'm talking about Sarah, 1999. So about wow. 20 years ago, she had cancer, pretty young, 63. Wow. That's but she was an artist and she was a very creative woman. Um, so I felt my family were very supportive, are very supportive and understand, I don't know, the power of carrying on, carrying on. If you're music or whatever, you know, it's, it's all doable. My mum was a good role model to me for that. What about you? Did you have a family? How was your family? Yeah, I, my, my father died at 63 and my mother began sort of on medical record, at least officially, her, her descent into the harrowing adventure of, of dementia and, and Alzheimer's also at the age 60, of 63. And, and she, she passed uh, in January of 2020, just, just yeah, just, not long ago, um, my dad years ago. Uh, but my mom was, she was kind of like a, a private artist. She did lots and lots and lots of art all the time and was kind of uh, committed to it, but she never showed it to anybody. She just did it uh, in her, she had a, a room in the house where she liked to work and she drew a lot, she drew a lot. Um, and so they were, yeah, I guess we benefited from they, they, they respected the arts in such a way that they, they were, yeah, they were artistically supportive, I guess you, for sure. Uh, yeah. They still wanted, they, they expected me to live a traditional life. And I think they were somewhat worried and disappointed when that didn't seem to be happening. But ultimately, uh, before they were both gone, they, they were able to have a little bit of confidence that I was not lost. <laughs> well, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah. Maybe a song now. Do you would you like yeah. to sing a song? Certainly. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I'll sing a song. I'll sing a song. Okay. I have this here, this machine. It says nobody. Um, so there was a. Uh, uh, I'll sing a song called Nothing is Busted. Um, I'm going to try to sing it. Uh, so, I, yeah, so I've been absorbed in this in these songs that I've done with my friend Matt Sweeney, and he wrote all the music, I wrote the words, and I've been really living in those songs and performing those songs. And, and so to go into these other songs, it feels like really another reality and, and another lifetime, but I'm going to see what happens when I try to do it. Um, this is a little song that has uh, two, two characters, or three if you include everybody outside of the two characters um, as, as one third character, uh, the entire rest of, of humanity. And it's about just two folks who are trying to uh, find love from a distance. She wouldn't look forward She wouldn't look back She wouldn't brace her heart For cruel attack Oh, She was asked to live happy 
out and for me just empty cupboards broken machines he wouldn't look upward he wouldn't look down he wouldn't give in Arms swarming round. Oh, oh, oh. he was asked to live happy without ample means, moth eaten blankets. Broken machines And halfway between them Is a deep, cool lake I hope they can find it Before something else breaks Oh, 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 the rest of the world is not to be trusted. They must meet in a place where nothing is busted where nothing is busted whoa three verses no chorus just there beautiful Thank well, you. We play it, it's fleshed out with lots of players, and we, you know, extend and repeat, and, and everybody gets to tinkle around and weave their. Oh, uh, really? Oh, wow. Players. They try to make the songs. I mean, the reason I make songs is to have something to play with other people and to ideally make a mechanical royalty so I can keep making more songs. <laughs> yep. Well, I must say, I admire your. Poof, you go. It's obviously. <laughs> It's, an, it's a real... Admire yeah, my put that was stunning. There. Hang on a minute. I've just got to make put some light here. Hang on. It's, it's, I think it's a bit too dark. Okay, that's maybe a little bit better. Yeah. It's middle of the day here, but it's a dark, rainy day in Kentucky. Is it really? Yes. Thank goodness. The tomatoes and the peppers and the herbs and the kale are all so happy that we're getting a little rain. Yeah, yeah. No, we have to be thankful for the rain whenever it comes. This is a little song which I made um, with. Uh, uh, I made it at my at my with my friend in his studio, and we make songs together. This is my great joy in life now is working with Dave Dave Gray, and um, he has a studio, so we've been making these songs together. And he does electronics, guitar, he, and great recording engineer really so anyway I go in there and we <laughs> the best way to get me to sort of make words is to force me into a beat and then see if something comes up so this is uh, rough with the smooth and uh, and I just love um it's, yeah it's, oh hang on Oh. 
time gets too short and days disappear hold on to that moment keep it near oh no matter where you are no matter what you do you're always gonna get the rough way the smooth no matter where you are no matter what you do Was it just your foot? Was it what? Was it your foot? Were you playing? You were playing. You were. Foot. Yeah, yeah. That was beautiful sound. And and, and have you always like uh, improvised or or used you know non lyric non lyrical vocalizations? Um. Yeah. Not. I've always liked to improvise, or at least when I was little, I used to mess about sort of. Then when I was at music college, I was really inspired by this course, which just like gave me this freedom to mess about. It's called Music Performance and Communication Skills. And although I was doing this hardcore classical training, this course was like, uh, it was just like nectar. So I got a, two years of that. And then I just kept getting kind of mentors or finding people that I were up for it. <laughs> yeah over continuously really that went alongside a sort of maybe folky teaching fiddle thing and then I would just do this improv free improv I loved it loved it and then um and then Dave and I were doing songs you know we were singing I was learning a repertoire of Scott songs and we were writing some songs together and then I was also started to think I need to um free up my voice I like felt my voice was wanting to just do stuff but I didn't know what to sing I, I didn't have words but I just thought why not why not and also with get with Gaelic there was a certain element that I at the beginning felt myself like saying oh well I don't speak Gaelic and I feel I should and there was all that kind of like mm, you know weight around it so I went okay I'm just going to like make it up yeah and just mess about make it up and then the yeah when i started to do work on these shows i wanted to call it what i called dig where i stood <laughs> I, I thought dig where you stand it felt like really important and it was kind of best that's basically what my shows are based on those four words dig where you stand yeah thanks yeah. to steve Byrne. actually i think i heard him say that phrase first but it, it was great it just rung a bell i was like yeah yeah, my folk culture. What's my what's my history, yeah. and what's what's the what's going on? You know, I'm singing these songs about other people's lives. Well, what is the life, and where's the lineage that I happen to have come from? But without getting too kind of heavy and emo and drag, that's the that's the difficult thing. Of course, it's not to just do it on memory, but to do it for real and to move through the characters or the situations for real. So it's been yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I kind of swipe, side swiped something just now. I can't remember. I didn't quite go back to the main point that we were talking about. But just, I'm just interested in in vocal. Yeah, vocal. Improvisation, and you know, because I, 
my ideal, which I don't know that I'll get to in this lifetime, is to figure out how to be so fluent that I could do vocal improvisation that includes lyric improvisation that that actually can communicate something and goes somewhere, but is is a full, essentially a full on, you know, like like a freestyle rapper, but with melody. Like that's, you know, so mm -hmm. so that you've got mm -hmm. maybe mm -hmm. a character mm -hmm. or a narrative that's yeah. coming coming forward and functions musically, um, yeah. but it's yeah. you know. It's just trusting, trusting in that in that next note. Where is it going to take you? And yeah. and, and, note plus, and the, plus a lyric, you know, which you you, well, you plus a lyric, yeah, impossible. Yeah, yeah. So it seems impossible. Uh -huh. Yeah. But if you, you know, I've got a few tricks. I mean, that's really interesting. Like when you're out there on stage and you're like, I don't know what I'm going to do, but I, so I have needed, and I think what what I need for sure are like is anchoring. And the audience, I feel, does too. So it's and I need that. Like I'm going to start with that, and then I'm going to improvise, and then I'm going to finish with something. I come back to something. That's been mm -hmm. my little pattern. Uh, and I've also come and gone with it. Like I found myself being freaked out by someone in the audience, or by an energy, or somehow not being in the right space, and feeling like, oh, what what am I doing? You know, just going really hard on myself, and then losing the plot. You know, and then coming away, and then thinking, okay, I'll go back in. And, always trying to I mean that's why I've got a stone I think is to have like give me some some heart to it and and, and anchorage or whatever it is it's work to be yeah. done I'm in the midst of trying to figure out how to do it that's for sure I don't have a uh, a proper millstone but I have boxes and bags of smaller rocks that I collect like when I'm traveling or on tour I I if I see a, you know a pile of rocks by the shore it's you know I get pulled to it and I'll just sit there and get lost and I'll just look through until I've found enough that it's going to cost me an extra 30 bucks to fly my suitcase home, you know, when I, wow. when I throw, throw them in there. Wow. Probably a similar kind of, yeah, looking for something to weigh me, weigh me down. I assume that you participate in sessions, right? In like song trading sessions at pubs, for example. Not, not at the um, moment. Not but at no, the moment. But you have, right? Yeah, yeah, I have, yeah, yeah. And have you ever found that there's a place there for, like, as a singer, I always am, you know, frustrated because it seems like instrumentalists um, can can get in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, a, and a singer is sort of limited to whether or not a song is shared mm. and known because it's so freaky to improvise you know, um, yeah. without words, you know, it, 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 it's it does provoke. Crazy yeah. Space. Yeah. It does provoke quite a lot um, of feelings of bunch people. I mean, I've had people thinking I'm singing in tongues yeah. and that I'm, I'm in some kind of trance or I've had folk and scared about that, you know, and uh, yeah, it definitely brings up this whole thing of like, am I a witch? Or like, what's going on here? What's the voice? You know, and yeah, and then I go, but no, I'm allowed to mess about with my voice. I can do yeah. that. Why not? Yeah. But then, of course, I'm going into quite a deep place. I find that it, there are places for those sounds that I know and for that kind of um, operation of sound. In other words, the kind of a heart song, you could call it, or you could call it an improvised in the moment, whatever. It feels as if I'm wanting to bring that back at some level and make it make it real for me for sure and and I feel it's been something that would have happened and uh, but it is frowned upon and it's at some level or, and I'm in myself it does a little bit yeah no you know, my grandfather was a free church minister uh -huh. I mean he was the real he was fire and brimstone if you weren't straight and on the narrow in some ways so I'm I was going, oh God, <laughs> but yeah. I can't stop myself. It's too much fun. Yeah, it is. It is a heck of a lot of fun. But yeah, I've always, I mean, whenever, okay. whenever I'm yeah. in a zone like that, I wonder, yeah, who, who's going along with me? And it, you know, mo are most people just sort of cringing and freaking out and saying, I can't go there. This is too strange. Like if I listen to a great vocalist like Meredith Monk, who's, you know, rarely ever utters an unintelligible word in her work, but is endlessly fascinating except it's also still always like well i don't know where i am as an audience member listening to this music because i'm listening to someone do something with their voice and the voice 
yeah. has this baggage where it's supposed to have a word attached to it or a sentence attached to it or a story attached to it. I think that's where we're at kind of as a species is that we can't necessarily handle it full on like that. We need to, it needs to be with story. It needs to be the story or at least that's what I'm doing at the moment. It doesn't need to be at all. It can be pure out there as far as I'm concerned. But what I'm making at the moment is with a director who's all about word. And I think there is that balance of like the word, the mind, bringing, bringing that something kind of anchoring it and then you can go away. At least I, that's the way I like to do it, go away. And then. So have you, done, have, you, have you done that on stage? Have you, what's been an experience for you around that? I mean, I'll do a, a little bit, but I don't, you know, if I'm going to alienate the audience, that's not how I want to do it. Um, so I, I will. No. You know, I'll, I'll, and, and sometimes I just can't help it. You know, you, you, there are things that come out of you. And, yeah. I, and every once in a while, I'll, I'll, something will come out and I'll, I'll be quite concerned that, I, that I'll have immediately put myself yeah. in a strange place that's not in the room with everybody anymore. Yeah. No, I know that feeling. Yelping. But, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. One time I was, I mean, Dave, I'll, let's be honest, Dave found it kind of hard when I started doing my, my sounding, as I call it, I call it sounding. Huh. And Dave, who's really, a, a, you know, he's into folk song and folk music, but I just, I just went over the line, you know, yeah. so we had, we've had quite a bit of, bit of sharing around that really. It's been kind of interesting and I understand that, but for some people, can't get enough of it. Some musical communities, you know, I guess as well. I Can't get know. enough of, of the sounding. Free, free improvisation or sounding or something that's, you know, there's no, there's not necessarily any boundaries. They seem to be being man-made. Shall yeah. I do a little play? I, in fact, I'll just do me, I'll make something up. Okay. And if you want, you can join in. No, no don't. Lag, it's no, it's going to get kind of weird. <laughs> And all, all improvised syllables, I'm assuming. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I can't help but always, yeah, feel this allegiance to or dependence on words. And, mm -hmm. and even, yeah, mm -hmm. just trying to figure out, well, needing the word to, to be, serve as, a, as that millstone, as the anchoring thing that keeps, mm -hmm. because once you drift into such uncharted territories, who's to bring you back or, or tell you when you've taken a wrong turn um, and, the, and the word at least associated with the word that comes before it and the word that comes after it is there to rescue you should you, should you falter or, or trip. Yeah. Yeah. The word does important, important things. Yeah, for sure. Please take the floor, Will. Oh, sing another song, you mean? Like, sure, you or I can, I can, that, yeah. Um, I mean, you, you just brought up something really, and a really interesting point. That was really interesting, no, noticing about how the word anchors. Um, I've learned, and I find that word quite hard to find, but I, but I do find them, and I'm having to find them, and it's interesting. I'm part of a collective here in Edinburgh, and it's called The Authentic Artist. Sounds a bit presumptuous, that name, but anyway. We, it's great and we are all these different artists for writers create like creatives in all these ways and we kind of doing this cross fertilizing is kind of going on you know for me it's a community that I've really been interested to notice how to collage stuff together and notice when what does one thing trump another so for instance if you've got uh, if you're if you're free-flowing with your wordless sounding like if I said to somebody, this is a heart song, listen from your heart uh, and shut your eyes and relax, then that's not a problem. So kind of partly it's the expectations as well of people so that there's space, you make, you make clear what you're doing. But when word comes in, then, um, then it just anchors it. Yeah, it pulls it right down and in and it gives it kind of a clarity, like an arrow. Yeah. Does the, does the, how does the collective interact in regular meetings so we have these we, every couple of weeks we can have physical meetings where people will show up and share some of their work like, you don't have to be for professional artists or anything but it, they'll maybe share a little bit of what they're up to and there's a kind of very um skilled set of tools around observing and supporting what you're seeing like we 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 kind of have learned from this woman called kath berlinson who kind of started the collective a bit. She's the director of the show that I'm making. She's got a fine, fine mind and very kind of skilled uh, at, at helping folk find find new ways of their little crossroads. It's, it's really woken up a, a, a quite an amazing community. And so we, we witness each other's work, basically. We just witness, witness and support everyone completely different, you know, it's been yeah. great. What about yourself in your in your neck of the woods? Have you got a com there's, there's a strong community here, but nothing nothing as formally organized as that. And it it could be potentially a, a wonderful idea to attempt to do that, especially now that we're able to be in each other's. Well, Kath does online. Yeah, right. Well, there's ways of doing it if you were, but it, there's some special people around that are just here to put in a bit of a fire you know there's things going on at the moment like life sort of settled down and I'm interested in that since lockdown I've been doing more pulling on like meeting all these teachers or people or new communities of people through online actually there's a bit uh, of that I'm extremely intimidated by online uh, extremely intimidated by it um, all, I know that there were so many things happening over the past year and a half and I just couldn't in fact, like, you know, I was, I was, I signed up for your Kaylee's, um, <laughs> thinking like it sounded so wonderful, but I'm just like, wait, but that means sitting in front of a computer. I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. Like, oh, wow. so strange to sit. Cool. Like, yeah. it's so strange. Yeah. Well, thanks for willing to do this then. That's really big of you. Oh, yeah, I mean, it's just weird. It's a weird, you know, some people are comfortable, you know, people, I have lots of friends who I, Feel like I've lost them to social media because that's where they do their social interaction now. And I see them on the street and they don't have anything to say because they've already shared it all with whoever the fuck they talk to on. Yeah, the right. 
So yeah. you've noticed like re real real one to one relationships are kind of quite different because of that. I think that might be that's probably true. Yeah, for years yeah. I've noticed. Yeah, I I just started to think like, does nobody have anything they want to talk about anymore? And then I realized all of a sudden it's that that they were already doing it like this, mm -hmm. and not wanting to have an actual interaction where you know where they could be potentially called out or contradicted or you know that that's awkward for some people. Real life is more awkward than on the computer. Yeah, the Zoom thing in a way certainly had a lot more choices. I mean, things around it I like, like I'm doing a fiddle class on a Wednesday night. That's what I'm doing and I, and I do love it. It's a slow session and everyone's muted and I play and then somebody kind of pops up and they play and we, and then I lead the session and then I play the piano for the tune and stuff and it's kind of fun. So there's been some nice things, but I like being, I don't really like being seen on zoom I, dry, I like having my camera off and i don't like people when they want you to have your camera on all the time i don't like that yeah there's, there's a there's a great um there's a uh, a music school just down the street here called the louisville academy of music and they're doing a summer program right now that includes these morning mindfulness things and, and i've been allowed access to their zoom thing and, and get to see an instructor working with kids you know 16 and under uh, and talk to them about mindfully approaching their instrument and mindfully approaching their music practice. And that's everybody's muted. And then he'll say, okay, Jasmine, now I want you to play, you know, your violin part here based on, you know, I want you to, you know, first breathe and find, you know, your emotional center and, and then create an intention and then play this, this, you know, play these phrases. And it's, that's been pretty amazing. Uh, that is amazing, to get, yeah. Like sort of spy on that, that. Wow. It's cool. Wow. So, so, so what are you, how, tell me again, what are you doing in the school? I'm, uh, actually I'm on the, 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 the I'm on the, I'm on the oh. board of directors. Yeah. So okay. they, they gave us board members. I don't, I don't know that I necessarily fit. It's my first board. It might end up being my last because it's, it's all, you know, it's a lot of just like, how do we, how do we, you know, get the, uh, you know, it's all it's all money, and how do we keep the build the roof over our head? And I, yeah. I just want yeah. to talk about music and how to you know how, and where music comes yeah. from and how to get it into people's hands and heads. Uh, but it's been fascinating to see. That sounds quite an inspired though, teacher. And it does work. That kind of mindfulness that can actually have an advantage because kids aren't so self conscious when they're around. You know, so something like that brilliant you know yeah it was definitely it was a, it was a nice. taking advantage of the medium in 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 a in a new way to me that, that that did seem actually like it was very appropriate and and yeah really but yeah new days good. ahead new days ahead trying to kind of keep it alive keep it live is 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 important that's what i kind of like about being on Liz Moore. when i'm up there i just forget the computer it just doesn't really feature in my life yeah. nothing like it does here Anyway, do, would you like to do even just, yeah, just going on just going on this little tour that I just did in, in California? It's so wonderful because it's just not even time to look down at this awful machine. Um, yeah. yeah. And then you come home and you realize it's still sitting there and it's just collected all the detritus from the past couple of weeks of traveling and you just have to <laughs> sort through it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I, yeah. We've got some um in heaven. I hope, I hope there's no internet connection in heaven. Yeah, I hope or, not. Yeah. I've got recent I've got recently into listening to this woman on YouTube <laughs> who communicates with um people who've died. Uh huh. I think she's amazing. She's called Amanda Ellis. And she's been talking to Kurt Cobain and uh, Hugh fill up my senses, John Denver. Oh yeah. And she said to particularly Kurt Cobain, "Are you? How is it going in heaven?" And he's going, "It's great. It's really great." Because and she says, "Are you writing songs?" And he says, "No, I don't need to write any songs. The Earth plane. If you're on the Earth plane, you're gonna have. I had to write songs. It was the only way I could survive it." But he says, "Here it's total chill. I'm with my pals. We're just enjoying ourselves. It's a. We're not, it was just." Brilliant. So I did think, yeah, yeah. The, this... I think in heaven that we won't feel compelled to make songs. 
It'll just be a part of you. Yeah, it'll be like singing angelic music. If you want to be singers, we'll be put in the angel choir. I yeah. suspect. Well, I just, With I also, like, the, the idea of making music is about, like, it's choosing the way that you, you, you know, choosing your method of participation in culture and humanity. And I, you know, ideally those things are just, you know, ideally in, in a, in an after world that is resembles paradise, those things are just, they're a part of breathing. It's not That's something what that it sounds you, like. you don't have to get down to work, you know, and put your nose to the grindstone in order for a, a song to exist. The song just exists. It's just a part of the air yeah. that we would live in. I would hope, you know. Like I mean, that's kind movie. of how I think it actually probably is on Earth too. But we've been, we've been kind of, I feel like there's an element of being, you know, controlled and put in boxes and thinking this and thinking that. And you just end up not knowing what you think about anything from that, that kind of lovely, relaxed song receiving place. Some people yep. get it from time to time, but most of us don't. And I find to access, that's what my work is at the moment. How do I get into that space? and? Being a bit more disciplined with with my time, and, but anyway, I've got the time and it's gorgeous, so I'm happy. <laughs> Do you fancy singing a song? Yeah, sure. Um. Uh, so yeah, this one is called "This Is Far From Over," and it's 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 imagining. Uh, it's trying to look at the bright side of, of uh, climate change and uh, decimation of the population. Though half of life is gone for good and we haven't acted as we should, you feel it in your heart a word that this is far from over shorelines gone and maps destroyed livelihoods dissolved and void entire languages unheard and still it's far from over sure and teach your kids to swim and navigate by stars above the fate of landlocked life is grim if you ignore our will to love when all that's left is sea and sun a lonely voice says all's not done it's your child who will be the one to sing it's far from over a traveler upon the sea sings it's a sailor's life for me i now embrace eternity yes this is far from over. You never know what she will find when we are dead and she is sailing, nor what new thoughts will cross her mind as wind blows in her hair. Don't worry if all life is gone the rocks and sea will still roll on and new wild creatures will be born yes this is far from over the whole world's far from over Beautiful, thank you. I also have keys that I normally do things in and I thought I'll do them in different keys because sometimes that can turn me on to different things about the song, you know, just, just singing it in a different key. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. <coughs> do you um, do different tunings on your guitar as well? I do just for messing around, but uh, it, just if I'm you know sitting by myself and messing around for an hour or two, uh, I'll I'll do that. But I never do that with other people. Yeah, my viola is just these four strings, and I decided I just wanted to really go back to basics and just keep it super simple. And I wanted to learn guitar, but I thought, no, I'm not going to learn guitar. I'm just going to keep doing it with this. But you don't get the same ring, you know, as the. It's a bit blip, 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 but it's it is what it is. And yeah, um, you able to coax some pretty powerful sounds. Out yeah, you can. You, it's it's got its own thing, you know. And um, we'll do a quick little one. This is called "Raise the Stone." Actually, there was a story in the West Coast about a storm needing to be raised to get this fella out of trouble and to stop a, a, a flotilla of ships coming up the Firth of Lorne and going to, to Mull and killing the people. And so they called on all the women and magic people to make a, a storm. And this old woman would pull on, apparently raise the stone. When she raised the stone, the storm started to come up. So. I just thought it feels like we're in the times of the raised the stones is, the stones getting raised. Um, so here's and I did this with a friend on Liz Moore who has this little, little recording studio, Davy, Davy Maddox. So he put the beat down and then we found this. Raise the stone, there's a storm a coming. loud and clear raise the stone hold your own Mary raise the stone come to your senses people senses come to your senses Fascia and skin, all oh, my senses on fire, fire. Oh, raise the stone, there's a storm a coming. Raise the stone, sing loud and clear. Raise the stone, hold your own, Mary. Raise the stone. Come to your sin. love to sit and discuss vocal improvisation for weeks on end with practitioners such as yourself get in a group of people and I'm also somewhat obsessed with the practicality of of music and what purpose it, it serves and you know ideally each song that we make is made because it has a place that's waiting for it in in the life of somebody else an individual or a group of people and mm -hmm. because the voice is the thing that i am connected most you know most deeply with musically i just think well i want to i don't want to i want to get to the place where you know i have a friend emmett kelly who when he plays a guitar solo he takes me somewhere and then drops you know he like builds me up builds me up and then he drops me in my own you know, little spot 
w with a new perspective on the world each time he plays a solo and i and i hmm. and i feel like the voice is so i don't know what is it vulnerable uh something that it it hmm. doesn't have that we, I, hmm. something like it's it's still like this musical exploration like i'm i'm with you and your voice when you're when you're doing those soundings mm -hmm. and but i'm but we're exploring like i'm i'm on your riding your coattails exploring kind of yeah here's, yeah where's the landing where it's like yeah this is what i this is where i was going with this thing you know and yeah. so now you know sit and think about that for a minute yeah like one of yeah one of the guys that i like making sense of it kind of working with like trying to find a beginning or find an end or, or wonder where are you going to end yes when are you going to end where's the ending yeah. finding an ending that's that's a deal you know it's something I, and, and i'm learning a lot from something called interplay which actually is in america and they've got a fantastic set of tools for finding endings and improvisation frameworks that are really short uh -huh. um yeah they're great that's I can, I, can, I can imagine also that have you ever done like soundings in partnership with one or more other singers yeah I think that could, because that's another thing is, of course, the yeah. limitation of, of we can only do one tone at a time with our voices unless we're, unless we're. Uh, <laughs> no, well, we can. No, this is the thing. We can. We, we, you just abandon, ti abandon the beat. Abandon yeah. the beat. And then we can go sort of, like, we could finish up our little thing with a little vocal improv. Huh? Sure. Anyway, whatever. <laughs> can you, can you nutshell for me, uh, just like, we have a little uh, musical adventure going on here in Kentucky with uh, the history of our state song, which was written by Stephen Foster. It's my old Kentucky home and has quite a complex narrative and quite a complex history. Hmm. And it's become, you know, people are looking at it a little harder as they thankfully are a lot of things. Mm -hmm. The result of the introspection we were allowed and the turmoil that was visited upon us in this past year and a half. But... Can you nutshell for me some of what you learned about Old Lang Syne or why why you dug into it to the extent that you did? Uh, well, I I dug into it. First of all, it was Dave who heard the song first and then he said to me, well, how about we, we do it and put it on the album back in 1994 because I wasn't familiar with that version of it. So he'd heard it in Aberdeenshire. So we learned it and we put it on the album and then it somehow just it was that song that just kept getting picked up well a couple of significant times basically and uh when it came to thinking about these shows old line sign was like this song just has been at my shoulder for like all my life like what is going on with this song so i did want to look into it and find out what 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 is this song because yeah in some level i was a bit <clears throat> didn't didn't connect that hugely with it but when I thought about things like Auld Lang Syne or R A and I was into my meditation and I'm doing my whole thing and I'm thinking it's like a mantra Lang Syne. I thought oh my lord maybe there's something in that who's thought that just was like yeah actually that is for real that is a vocal Auld Lang Syne is a vocal workout spiritual kind of a whole thing vowels and they all lined up with the same vowels that I was sort of aware that there are connections so that was one thing the song emerged and then also that I forgot the words to sing when I was singing it for President Clinton right so I had a personal trauma as an artist around it yeah. being on the Kennedy Center stage and and losing the words and having to make it up right I went da 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 da, da you know da da dum da 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 da. I just kept singing, but I just diddled it because I can improvise, man. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't the best. Dave was there, of course. There was an aside, but you know that was a bit of a deal, and it was I was I was oh, it was just awful. But I thought I've got to make something of this, so that came into the show as well. So that's why I went into it. But ultimately, what I think I was trying to say was there is a really interesting depth to this song and it does seem to and it's about friendship and we all know friendship <clears throat> yeah. and you, um, you, you, built a, you built a show around your relationship to the song and your history with it 
Yeah, I did that, yeah. yeah. In the yeah. course of the show, did you perform it a number of times, the song? So I performed in, in the show, you mean, or what? Yeah, in, in the, the show. show yeah. In the show, I, I did the show about 30 times. I've done it about 50 times, actually, in Scotland, like in the Fringe and all of that. And I did sing the song in the show, but I kind of unpicked it, you know? It was like, there's a scene where I'm, I'm various characters sometimes, so I would be, Dave is big on the Scots, and I don't always get the correct pronunciation. Uh. And it's one of the things that we have in Scotland, which is, are you pronouncing it right? It's a something that happens between us a little bit. And so it was funny, you know, there's humour in this thing because I'm, he's going, I was going, we'll talk a right good willy walked. And then it's not, a, what does that mean? Well, it means a right good, a, good, a big dram, you know, a good dram. All right, well, it's not what I thought it meant. And, and or, you know, it went, so we had a lot of fun with it. Yeah to do with how you pronounce it. And the, so the, the, the core of the show was really about the sound of the song, not uh, the meaning of it. Right. The I meaning, the yes. Is being, is, is being traditionally six syllables. So how do you get, you get your O, A, O, A, I? O, A, I, I think it, I think it hits on the song. All line, I, and also within the, vo the tune where it's all line, sign, and that oh, yeah. kind of note, I, da 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 da, like, yeah. it's fun. Yeah. Something to kind of hook into it anyway. I don't know whether there's anything in it, but I thought that's kind of cool. <laughs> anyway, but are you involved? So are you just last thing, um, the song if your your local song, your Kentucky song. Are you rewrite? Are you making a show about that? That then is there something no, like um, we live we live near a little uh, no yeah a small botanical garden that's just kind of trying to get off the ground, and they're they're putting a uh, Japanese garden, a traditional <laughs> Japanese garden in this botanical garden. And it's about a ten minute walk from our house, and. Uh, one of the directors there said, "Would you, you know, would you want to come and sing my old Kentucky home? We're going to have the Japanese ambassador to the United States is coming to come to Kentucky, and he's going to be there. I think it's a he, he's going to be there." And I said, oh, "I, you know, I actually don't want to sing that song. Um, mm. uh, so no, thank you. But you know, I'd love to. You know, I, I'll go to the ceremony." And then he said, "Well, we understand." And what we've talked about and what we're going to do is because the Japanese apparently are very fond of my old Kentucky home. So we're going to, it's going to be performed on a Koto. Uh, is there anything else you'd like to sing? And I said that last song that I sang, this is far from over. I said, well, I could, I could sing that. And uh, a friend of mine who plays flute can come and join me. And, and, you know, I don't know what you think about that. And he was excited about that. And then I just noticed that a friend of mine is writing a, a full length book about, my old Kentucky home and about its history oh. and, and cool. what it means now. It's, it's, you know, it's like our national anthem. It's a fairly challenging song to sing. It's a challenging song to remember all the lyrics, which you'll appreciate. Um, and it's, and it's, you know, it's sung most notably here in Louisville at the annual Derby, Kentucky Derby horse race, which itself is, you know, kind of a disgusting event, but it, it it's a, it's a primary, uh, commercial money-making fixture for, for our for our for our community um, so yeah it's just I, I fantasize about there being a new, a new Kentucky song not that I should have any reason to hope for you know uh, a, an officially recognized song as being a song of quality oh I think you would be well you should be writing the next Kentucky song for sure I if hope I that happens to, I would do it and I would have a hell of a great time doing it you know like yeah. when somebody entrusts you with such a task there's no more fun to be had than than to play with you know the boundaries that they've given you and i think that you could have a good chat with dave about that he's he's a lyrics man right on yeah well how are we doing we got we got I think well, maybe could good to, to to wrap up but you know yeah, we, we could maybe maybe wrap with with another another song each. 
Well, I've done three, but Will's just done two. Yeah. I'll do another. Have you got any slackers who are asking us any questions out there? Nobody's asked any questions at all yet. So I'm ready. This is your last chance, folks. My last chance. Get questions. Between, now, between now and Will getting his, the end of Will's song. Uh, okay, yeah, so I'll, I'll sing a song by the end if nobody has any questions, then I'll go eat lunch. Um, this song is called uh, Look Backwards on Your Future, Look Forward to Your Past, and, and it, it's, it's one of its purposes for existing is, it, is it's just, it kind of has a refrain and it's kind of easy to sing, and I, I have some friends down in Nashville who get together and play music together, and there's always this moment where they say, hey, Will, you know, you sing a song now and then i'll realize that i have very few songs that have refrains that and you know or, or that have uh repeating chord progressions that are fun and easy to play along with in a in a social situation so i tried to make a song that was fun to potentially fun for people to sing along with um, and it's a story Richard was a stout-hearted man He'd been through the bulk of his life He no longer spoke to most of his folks And was abandoned by his wife Rolling down the road one night alone He came upon a terrible sight An older woman lays bleeding in the road And her screams about filled the night she said, look backwards on your future and look forward to your past. Everything upon which you base your faith is made of vapor and it won't last. It's only everything in our shared reality that keeps our souls held fast. So look backwards on your future and look forward to your past. Well, Richard woke the next morning and spoke. He said, there's something I feel I must do. He called up all of his natural born kids and all his money from the bank he withdrew. You see, he changed his mind about everything he'd ever felt about what's bad and good. He fixed a loudspeaker to the roof of his car and he sang to everyone he could. He sang, look backwards on your future and look forward to your past. Get your sense of time from the ancient Hawaiians, your sense of self from a hydrogen blast. You'll be what came before you were what is to come. He bellowed out to everyone he passed. Look backwards on your future and look forward to your past. Well, Richard got arrested in Loretto. He was causing too much mischief for the sisters. He spent an evening in the clink and then went home and turned to drink and gave his all. Yes, he was a double fister. The issue was the kind of past he had behind him. Most of what he'd spent were wasted days. So the history he faced was an ocean made of empty and a destiny you wouldn't want to save. Still, I sail a backward on your future and look forward to your past. If you haven't gone and made a mess of yourself, you just might end up with the last laugh. Every little dot of p -p presence and thought for another will give your life class. So look backwards on your future and look forward to your past. This particular assemblage of molecules and memories someday soon may just run out of gas. So look backwards on your future and look forward to your past yeah look backwards on your future and look forward to your past hey 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 hey
Great. Thank you very much, Will. Cool. <laughs> Thank you. Great to meet you, Will. Back at you, Mary. Wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And you're friend you're friends with Nuala? Yeah. You're friends with Nuala? She's yeah. a marvel. Yeah, she is. She is. I think they're crossing Ireland now, aren't they? Living in Ireland. Yeah. Come between Ireland. Yeah, she's really something. We tried it we tried it over, like about four years ago maybe I, I, I was putting together a, a record of songs learned from the records of this, this so it's the songwriting and songs that he sang of Merle Merle Haggard, the American country singer. And mm. my dream was I had all these musicians that I work with here and, and then to add Nula into the mix and that mm. we would record it live just in the next room over there. And mm. then she was uh with child and in California and couldn't couldn't fly. So everything was live except Nuala's parts and she had to overdub everything. But okay. it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. You're doing stuff with her still. That's great. Yeah. Good. Good. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, to both of you. That was, a, that was a great conversation with lots of twists and turns and uh, little nuggets in there. So thank you all very much. Uh, thanks to the folks who are listening in. Uh, I hope you enjoyed that uh, that exchange. Uh, just a wee reminder that uh, the, the Folk Film Gathering finishes tomorrow. So you have until 6 o'clock tomorrow night to check out the films that are available. Uh, and uh, I'm going to let Will go and get his lunch now. So just to say thanks once more to Will Oldham and to Mary Campbell. and. Uh, this conversation will be available online sometime in the future so you can check in with it again so yeah. thanks very much and goodbye to everyone thank you Bye. thanks thank Will you. thanks David thanks Mary bye bye <laughs>